And we're here at LabCon, and we have Luke and Ian from Tank Lab. I'll see you again. <laughs> Let me see you both again. Always yeah, a pleasure. Yeah. It's yeah. tanks and laugh. It's madness, I tell you. <laughs> it's madness. But I think last time, we proved that you can't have tanks and laugh. Oh, it, it definitely happened. All yeah. of those stories of, you can't have tanks, can you? There isn't real tanks, are there? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah, yep. So it all is. happened. Yeah, yeah. There were tanks, there were people with APCs. Yeah, they yeah. really were there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that was a fantastic event. That, that was event one last year. Sure yep. was. Yeah. Um, ta tank Lab 2? Tank Lab 2, yep. Happening roughly the same time of year this time round. It's the first weekend in July. Nice weekend. Yeah. And you've got plans for that, haven't you? Oh, we have plans, yes. Go on. Um, due to the fact that we didn't really know what we were playing with to begin with, yeah. we had to kind of play it on safe mode for the first one, so yeah. we, were, we didn't want to push the boat out too far. Okay. Now that we've sailed the boat, we know how, to push, uh, how far to push out that specific boat. <laughs> wow. We now have better ideas on how to use the APCs for the engagements. Yeah. We now know how to make the tank actual battles a bit more immersive for them. Oh, we now need to... Uh, with, uh, Hopefully, better crew numbers for next time. We can actually keep the action constantly going because, sadly, we did have some last-minute dropouts, which meant yes, a it kind of bit of yeah, action it, here or action there. Exactly. Yeah, we yeah. only had enough crew to either do skirmishing or NPCs. Yeah. But we now have a lot more recruits on the list and stuff like that, so that oh. we have the ability to make two dedicated teams constantly doing stuff and keeping the action almost 100% of the time. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Part of our original problem that that we're doing something that nobody else does. One yeah. group normally against the world, whoever yeah. they are, the disparate ideas coming together. Yeah. We have two utterly separate red and blue camps. Yeah. Um, with their own are. unique dynamic, sort of doing the same thing of their side of the war, yeah. but learning and processing what we're throwing at them in completely different ways. Yeah. Even if it's the same thing, like our war overall battle, our overall war going on, shown on a war table, yeah. each group jumped on it but they did it completely differently yeah learned their own way and we couldn't talk about it with either of them at the same time because yeah. they're giving it away how they each yeah. one are doing yeah and that was a big thing actually wasn't it that actual looking at the old, the huge picture and then narrowing it down to yeah. a skirmish or a tank battle oh, exactly yeah, yeah. A, a reason for being in that world a reason why we're here, what we're doing, and why we're going out to our encounter. Why, yeah. are, why am I going in the back of an APC that's just driven up? Because my general sent me here. Yeah. There's a command yeah. post that needs taking. We're mm -hmm. going out there to do that yeah. now. This will affect the overall picture. Mm -hmm. I'm in the world. And actually, it's not just a skirmish is going right or wrong for the, big, the player low level. If you don't get that command, that, that, that command center, yeah. Changes the war. Yeah. How does how does that affect me? And actually having where some of them succeeded and some of the encounters they, they yeah. were not successful yeah. for the players yeah. and having that response immediately, yeah. Yeah. how did that affect me? One time the Revarans thought they actually got away with uh, succeeding the mission. They thought they disarmed the bomb, not realising that the Goldans actually brought a secondary bomb with them. Oh. So they actually uh, spent the additional resources to bring a backup, which again is something that they didn't predict, but it was something that can literally go either way for them. So, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And us reacting to what the players did, that was really the, the whole purpose is for us to be, we have a, an overriding world plot, you do. but we're not overriding the, work, the players' reactions to it. Okay, yeah. you're, you're player reactive, you're not, yeah, you're not yeah. pushing the players anywhere. Exactly, yeah. When we do the newspapers for the, like the, the full weekend, we have to kind yeah. of like pre-plan what's going to happen. We can only say that the events happened, we don't really say as to what the players' reactions were for it. Yeah. Yeah, anything future than that goes, comes into the next event, so that we have something to go with. So we, can, we give them like a summary of the information through the in-character newspaper, yeah. not an accurate description of what was going on. So the little thing um, concerning Concerning the plot on the Saturday night with the medical tents, yeah. they still don't know the exact details of that, but they might know it at the beginning of the next event. So that's all going to come through. That's all going to come through, yeah. yeah. It also gives them a, a chance to catch up as well. So the newspaper on the Friday also acts as a bit of a reminder for what yeah. happened for the last event. Well, uh, like last a, event this a, happened. A, exactly. Yeah, Previously we, on Tank Club. Yeah. <laughs> and politics that your group might get given to you might not know the other group might not know and vice versa yeah um and certainly our the, the encounters that we've run where 
some of our players will crew the opposite's encounter, yeah. won't interact with their plot, they won't find out something they shouldn't know just because they happen to be NPCing a particular encounter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, trying to keep it as immersive as possible for the people that are involved yeah. and giving them a benefit from that. You know, I'm not just going to go is. and crew some encounter no. or I'm not just going to go into combat. Why am I there? What's it all about? Right. Yeah, I think that, that's great. And okay. it's not like you didn't see some of that horrible, horrible fun first hand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah, you be on the camera. There's nothing wrong with it. getting in the back of an APC and filming people, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he loves it really. Yeah, yeah. And that whole that the the what was really good for us that utterly unscripted encounter that you guys filmed yeah. from a static camera point of view, where where there's a torture scene, there's a, an ambush. Yeah. Seeing yeah. it from our perspective and then also the players at the same time oh, yes. it's such a great thing for us to see the nuts and bolts of what we do how yeah. how immersive it was but it all came together yeah yeah it started yeah. Yeah. simply encountered then the players took it in their own directions yeah. and it, it and had its had, own life we had to react to that you know yeah. I'm, I'm in that encounter with uh, as a as the medical representative yeah. the geneva convention guy who's saying, well, you know, do you, do you want me to get involved and rescue this person? Well, no, they're a bandit. We'd like to torture and, and interrogate them. Mm, OK, well, don't talk to me then. And yeah. I'll just turn away and, and look the other way while, yeah. while they cut his fingers off. <laughs> um, but again, that was utterly the player's decision yeah. and, and an outcome. They drove that encounter. Yeah. We didn't say, yeah. well, there has to be this. No. The, o the only slide we had was pretty much we had to get it cut off by a certain point so that we can get the next skirmish on the, underway. Yeah. So we, at one point we said, oh yeah, there's, uh, if, if we stay here any longer, the smoke will cause us to be a walking target for yeah. uh, uh, artillery. So we've got to better get out of here and pretty that, quickly. And that there was a foreshadowing. Two minutes later, it the first flash bang comes in. Did, yeah. Yeah. And they then go, oh, yeah, actually, maybe we should get yeah, it. Yeah. And, yeah. and off they go. And I'm all for, I'm all for you know, a little bit foreshadowing. It's, yeah. it's, it's a, Oh, and then that, that allows us, as soon as the door closes, to sweep up the field. Yeah. The NPCs are not getting up with a finger in the air. They're not. There's no respawning bad guys. There's no massive monster to hit 50 times. No. That visceral feel of human beings, human beings fighting human, human beings. beings. It's, it's, it's there in real, yeah. 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 And I was watching a lot of the combat that close to them as like, we were filming and mm. photographing, and it was that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bob yeah. dies. George drops his gun and says, you've killed Bob, and, and starts crying over the body. Yeah. But, hold on a minute, you're a spod, you're an NPC, why are you, well, oh, because you've killed my mate, why? Yeah. We, we grew up yeah. together, why are you doing that? Uh, some monsters <laughs> might start sh suffering from um, shell shock or something like that, yeah. and being under fire for too much. Very much like the beach scene in Saving Private Ryan, where yeah. people start getting very emotional over what's going There's on. There's a yeah. war going on, yeah. and you're in it, you're real yeah. people, yeah. you've got a real life, you're not just... Uh, like they're not cookie cutter player characters, they're not cookie cutter, they're they're cutter monsters, they're people. No. People. We don't have, well, we, I'm not saying we don't have monsters. There are weird <laughs> things going <laughs> on in the world. Yeah, yeah. But, but they were not monsters. We're not, yeah, yeah. And, and that, yeah. we also wanted that to be the, the risk element. There's yeah. three of us, there's five of them. How risky is this going to be when we're all wearing heavy armor? Yeah. I can actually look and gauge the fight. Yeah. It's not, well, I'm a bucket of stats. Yeah, no, yeah. No, I've like, got 50 hits and I have a bucket of stats. No, that's not really. That's not going to work that, like this. And that's not what we wanted. No. no, that, no. That design, those design choices, we sat down for 18 months before our first game. Yeah. And we discussed how we wanted our game to look and feel. Mm -hmm. And we had to be on board with that before yeah. we started. Yeah. And that perfect balance actually increased the tension for a lot, awful lot of the fights. Yeah. Because you go into this and you count the number of people on the other side, and you know for a fact they have exactly the same stats in you, regardless of whether they're enemy players yeah. or they're uh, just the monster crew, because they are going to be just the same amount of soldiers as you are. Yeah. You, your commandos, you're highly decorated, but that just means you've been around for a long time. It doesn't make you extra bullet resistant. Yeah, no, so, no, no. <laughs> and, that feeling, and there's also the, oh, I'm shot, oh, I'll instantly heal. No, yeah. that, that, that exists, so. no, 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 no. And, and even there, that, so, well, there's three more of them than there are of us, and we still won the fight. How much better do yeah. I feel? Yeah. Oh, yeah, how much better are doing that? That's, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's a difficult fight we've come mm. through, or the belief that, well, oh, there's more of us than them, we'll win this fight. Yeah. Mm, you sure? You sure with this? <laughs> So it, again, that, that whole point of it, I'm yeah. so glad that, that what we did, while it wasn't perfect, mm -hmm. we've learned an awful lot from yeah, it yeah. that we will yeah. be doing. As, as Luke's touched on, the tank battles for me were, were very immersive. Yeah. You, you've already interviewed the guys that came out of that, yeah. how frothy they were. They were so excited. Yeah. So 
deeply involved in it. I can't tell you some of the comments they said <laughs> because they're not for public view <laughs> and how excited they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we've learned from that and how we'd like to make it even more immersive before they go in yeah. and before they come out. So they're, oh, they're fully engaged in the outcome of their encounter yeah. when they come back to camp. So they're not umming and ahhing about what happened. No. And, and it's as, in, it is as immersive for them as it is for when they come out to continue their story. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that's, for me, that was my part of that was the tank battles that yeah. I mm -hmm. arranged. And that, that's what I've learned from that. Yeah, that's and great. the next, next one, hopefully, will be so much better. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, you do one, you learn, you, you go on. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I think no system's first event ever goes smoothly. No, That's no. the point. It, they're always trying something different. They all have gone through, like, five-on-five -five play tests. But when it hits the bigger players and they're not, not quite understanding of the rules, and or they don't quite get up. into the theme of the, what the rules stand for, it doesn't necessarily work. Um, Empire didn't really start to gel until se end of second event for yeah. me. Uh, the yeah. combat was all the, the the combat itself was good, but the actual way the battles were worked yeah. didn't gel until the second event. That's Nowadays they, they gel so well. Yeah. But there's always well, be... if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like, click the subscribe, and turn on your notifications, which will tell you when we next upload. Also, there are some videos here you can watch. They don't click themselves. I mean, you've gone this far and you still haven't clicked them. Go on.